you said about the last letter that's been you know uh, yes. written by the soldiers but uh, that's something l- many people don't know about that uh, would you like to share some some of the last letters yes being unsure that whether they will uh, come back alive or not so they always have to write a letter to their family before leaving for the operation everyone fighting out there is my son so to retrieve my son's body i cannot uh, risk other son's life so just don't worry i will wait so they knew that they have lot of responsibility some were only child of their parents some had lot of siblings to take care of but yet they didn't think twice to choose country before their own family and own comfort it's more likely you are you know you're working on the sword anything could happen and that moment your people making you write a letter as your last letter so like even if i have to write something as my last letter sitting here comfortable in a studio i'm going to be shaking for sure he uh, lost his life in the war on 29th june and his daughter was born on 14th september 2 months ba- after that so i would uh, love to uh, read out a letter that he used to write from the war zone to his wife pregnant Ra- right? yeah pregnant wife so then uncle said you know i'm an artillery officer you can't fool me if he was hurt and he was in an hospital you wouldn't have called me so i know he is no more so you have called me two person one person if belonging to up will get say 10 lakh and another person belonging to say west bengal will get 1 lakh they were actually taken as prisoners of war mm-hmm. and they were tortured brutally means if you go home and search for uh, search postmortem report of captain sor of kalia you will see that uh, his eyes were uh, taken out um, hot iron rod were uh, uh, punctured his ears and lot of things as soon as i saw his face it had become this much and uh, i in- i immediately decided that i will not allow my parents to see him for the last time because they will not be able to bear that pain he immediately with around 30 people went to search and there he saw that there are a lot of pakistani army so he immediately asked his rest of the men to go back and inform the base till then he will be handling those uh, enemy sister thought that when the body will come then only i will tell them because there was no uh, surety when they will be able to send the body and uh, the the parents were going to all the temples and doing all the havans and uh, puja for the safety of their son and uh, his sister knowing everything were accompanying all those pujas he man teacher just asked that let me means are you sure my son is no more because you know if i am doing the puja and his photo is there and suddenly he comes and say what mother i am still alive and you are doing my puja Our today's guest is Adhruja. She is not someone who's so very famous, but I met her in a cafe few days back. I had a conversation with her. It's about the martyrs of the Kargil War. She is someone who's closely working with the families of the martyrs. She and her community who are working on this make sure that the needs of the martyrs family are being met. Today's podcast was very emotional to be honest. It was mostly about the martyrs of the family what happened to them in the kargil war what happened to the families after the martyrs and there is a practice in the army that they write a lost letter for their family before going into the war and today we had an opportunity to go through the letters that adrija had an access to to be honest it was very emotional to see what kind of state were they in at their last moment the last letter is written by all the soldiers before going into the war if they don't come back those last letters will be sent to their family if they come back those letters will go to the dustbin so this is the normal practice in the army and a lot of soldiers obviously do not come back and their letters are being sent to their families and adrija had access to few of those letters which we got to know about in this podcast so this is going to be one of its own kind Wow, it's fully emotional, fully patriotic podcast. I would say, as we are approaching to the Kargil victory day, I think this is the perfect time to do this podcast. So 
सो हियर वी हैव अद्रिजा आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन बिकॉज दिस इज समथिंग आई एम रियली इंटरेस्टेड इन टू इट्स अबाउट आर सोल्जर्स द पीपल हु डाइट फॉर द नेशन सो द कारगिल डे इज ऑल्सो अप्रोचिंग सून सो आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन दिस इज समथिंग आई मेट अ इन अ कफे सम टाइम बैक सो दैट मोमेंट आई डिसाइडेड आई रियली नीड टू हैव अ कॉन्वर्सेशन विथ अ सो आई एम सो एक्साइटेड फॉर दिस वेलकम मैम हव यू Hi thank you I'm good how are you I'm good I'm good thank you so much for having me here I'm really honored because the first time I met you it was like what are the things you shared with me I couldn't you know sleep for like 2 3 days after that. that that thing you know kept haunting me the because what we see in the news is just about the incidents that are happening exactly. the back stories we never get to know that so I think you really have some connections with that uh, how you st- you know got into all this like uh, actually uh, when kargil war happened in 1999 we were in class 11 mm-hmm. and it was a very well covered uh, war in the media mm-hmm. so in television in newspapers so every day in the newspaper there was a column where we had stories about a soldier who has sacrificed their life and they also used to write uh, how the family is feeling when the, the coffee coffin is coming back to their home so reading all those we felt that at, as if we lost someone very close to our heart like we felt uh, we felt like losing someone from our family only so at that time we decided that we have to do something for our soldiers so initially we wanted to like me and my childhood friend monoshua we wanted to join army but somehow that didn't happen and then in 2014 we thought that we should reach out to the families of our soldiers who sacrificed their lives and try to uh, share their pain we cannot reduce their pain indian army is taking very good care of them re- in financial way what is needed is that little acknowledgement that gratitude as a citizen the of my support. yes to listen to them we just need to go sit beside them and listen to them because there are few feelings that they may not share with their family they feel that their family will also f- uh, feel sad so we uh, try to uh, share that pain and give them some emotional support so this desh is not an ngo we haven't registered it so we call ourselves a family because with time while sharing the emotions the families become a part of our family and we become a part of their family so that's how it all started that's amazing but uh, when we met the last time you shared about the last letter that's been you know uh, yes. written by the soldiers and uh, that's something l- many people don't know about that uh, would you like to share some some of the last letters yes actually uh, 26 July 1991 uh, we won the Kargil war and it is known as Kargil Vijay Divas so this 26 July two days after it will be 24 years so i thought that today i will share few unknown stories of our soldiers so i have some letters with me so i just thought i will read it out to your audience okay so uh, captain kangaroos okay so he belonged to uh, to rajrif and because of his valor he got mahavir chakra which is the second uh, highest gallantry ever during war time so he got killed in war on 29th june 99 and he wrote this letter on 8th june so what happens you know when they go for any operation being unsure that whether they will uh, come back alive or not so they always have to write a letter to their family before leaving for the operation so sitting amidst all those bombardments and all in that terrain so see how calm and composed he was and he wrote this for his family so here he says to his brother he wrote this i wonder if you are thinking about building up your career in a better way i don't mean to look down on your job but the nature of your job is that you will remain as what you are throughout you need to build up your image i can tell you this that an officer who might be drawing less pay than yours but will be respected more as per the status so he thought that he may not come back and he had left some message for each one in his family and here this is the most touching part of the letter he says the last thing which i want to tell you today is about myself and the situation in which i am there is nothing for you to worry this is just to inform you that everything work out well later i have already shifted to kargil sector 
where there are a lot of problems going on between India and Pakistan. To tell you very frankly, our lives over here are in danger throughout. I have not informed our parents about it because I don't want them to be worried. If in case it is the will of God that I have to close my eyes from this place, please take care of dad and mom. They should be made to understand that I have been taken from this life to another better life. Take care of our brothers and sisters. Be an example to them. None of you should feel sad and all of you should forgive me if I have done anything wrong. As for me, I have nothing against any one of you. If I come back alive, I will tell dad and mom myself. But if, but if I don't, please tell them about. Then she has mentioned the name of his girlfriend, which I am not reading out. So tell them about this girl also and do respect her for she is my best friend. She cares for me a lot. Remaining things I have written down on my diary for dad and mom. Please check it out. There is nothing for you to worry about. So in while trying to assure them not to worry, not to worry, he has also like passed on the message that he want to, if he is not there, if he doesn't come back. So and if you see the handwriting also like sitting there how beautiful his handwriting is writing on the Yo. stone amidst uh, <laughs> so means these are more of philosophy than a mere letter definitely because like why are they even making them go through this like ev before every war they'll have to write i don't know why and uh means uh they were very young, you know, 21, 22 years, all young captains who have sacrificed their lives. So they knew that they have a lot of responsibility. Some were only child of their parents. Some had a lot of siblings to take care of. But yet they didn't think twice to choose country before their own family and own comfort. I think Indian Army trains them to be like that, you know. But imagine you're gonna go to you know you're gonna you're in a situation where there's no certainty for your life it's more likely you know it's more likely you're you know you're walking on the sword anything could happen and that moment your people making you write a letter as your last letter so like even if i have to write something as my last letter sitting here comfortable in a studio i'm gonna be shaking for sure Sitting at a war scenario, I don't know how it's going to feel. I mean, they are, I think, the most calm and composed and cool person. Because, I mean, they are ready for everything. They have chosen this path knowing the, the future, which is very uncertain. And yet they have like, they have a lot of thoughts that they want to convey to their family if they don't come back. They had their plans. So on that context, I would also love to share one more I means uh, two more letters of another uh, officer major please please, please. major padmapani acharya he also received mahavir chakra and belongs to the same unit he uh, lost his life in the war on 29th june and his daughter was born on 14th september two months after that so i would uh, love to uh, read out a letter that he used to write from the war zone to his wife pregnant right yeah pregnant wife so he writes my dear wife keep reading bhagavad gita so that the child imbibes the same culture and good habits no watching horror serials read a chapter of bhagavad gita daily and do regular puja the little one in you has to have culture you must visit the doctor to have a regular checkup and to ensure that everything is normal well that's all for now i miss you a lot and will keep missing you till i get home and he never got home yeah and i mean you were telling that how they would have thought if they when they were asked to write a last letter so again like here is a letter written on 19 june just 10 days before he died and they are so practical that they describe the situation you know it is like war is a professional hazard that we have to face like here he is writing to his father dear papa please don't worry about casualties it's a professional hazard which is beyond our control so why worry at least it's for a good cause 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna briefs Arjun on the following lines: "Hato va prapsvasi swargam, jitva va bhokshya se mahim, taduttishth kaunteya yudhyaya krita nishchaya." So, actually, which means, die as you will go to heaven, conquer and you will enjoy sovereignty of the earth. Means, if you live after the war, then you will be uh, respected as a great warrior. And if you die uh, in the war doing your duty, you will enjoy heaven after death. So, that's how they used to feel actually, like. But still, I couldn't really come to terms with it. It's just I can't imagine losing my family member or even me. Would I be ready to, you know, sacrifice my life for the nation? I don't know. Would I do that? I don't know. But it's I'm just I don't know what to do. Just no, bowing know, down to this that's, day. So that's just, that's what many people say. There are soldiers sacrifice life because after. Uh, their death they will get some good pension their family get will get some some government job and all but i actually want to ask those people who's who thinks in this way that if you are given a if you're given a government job pension lot of money canteen facilities will you be able to sacrifice your son your husband your father so everyone is not ready for that not everyone no one would do that these kind of people are you know they just making that baseless statements without any emotional connect without any thought of what the family goes through It's just i don't i don't think we should even need to address these kind of people but do you have you know you someone who was who is working with the families of the marchers so do you, do you ever felt like there is something the government should take care of this aspect of the marchers family do you ever felt you know anything like that it's the responsibility of both the government and the common people in two way i i, I will tell you know in in india there are like state wise states declare that if someone uh, if if a soldier sacrifices his life in the uh, line of duty then the state declares okay fine i will give them 8 lakhs money or something like that and now it depends on state which which state wants to give how much but you know the the soldiers die for a country for their country so on a same operation two person one person if belonging to up will get say 10 lakh and another person belonging to say west bengal will get 1 lakh so this disparity should not be there so i think government can sit with the states and come to a common point where all the soldiers across india is treated same uh, in this way and regarding the the common people you know when a soldier dies suddenly the family from a defense background is exposed to the civil background because after 2 years they have to come out of their army accommodation and have to find out a house in the civil area and uh, then they have to like i have seen lot of veer naris who actually they say that you know when my husband was there i never had to bother about the bank works or any all those things and suddenly i am exposed to this so uh, we if we try to uh, make their lives little easier like if someone many people say how we can serve our nation you don't have to always serve your nation in uniform you know if you are a banker if any soldier or if any veer parivar comes to you just try to uh, help them as much as possible by serving them first it, it, in in any profession like in in be it a doctor in your hospital if someone from the army background or if the family comes then treat them first so that their life gets little easier because already they are dealing with that loss and the head of the family is not there they have to do it everything all alone so if in every aspect of our life in our society we can just make their uh, daily living little easy then it will be of great help i i that actually makes a lot of sense because i never knew that you know people get different kind of you know settlement for this exactly. i don't know like why would anyone do that i think the government should really it depends on the state yeah. but everybody is a soldier like everybody should be treated equally yes, yes i really think so so have you come across any i'm sure you would have uh, can you share some of the stories that touched you deeply yeah 
actually since uh, this desh that we have formed has started or got inspired by the kargil war so i would like to share the the beginning of the kargil war which happened when actually uh, all of you have seen in the loc kargil movie or have read that uh, some shepherd had seen some movement of the terrorist and then the things started so there was captain saurav kalia of uh, fort jat regiment uh, regiment who actually was sent along with six more soldiers to see what is happening who mm-hmm. has came into uh, means crossed the loc whether they are just local terrorist or uh, pakistani army so when he went and there were a uh, lot of pakistani army uh, out there so uh, captain saurav kali and six men got outnumbered and were killed not killed initially they were actually taken as prisoners of war mm-hmm. and they were tortured brutally means if you go home and search uh, for search post mortem report of captain saurav kalia you will see that uh, his eyes were uh, taken out um hot iron rod were uh, uh, punctured his ears and lot of things so what annoys us is that the family alone fought for the justice for captain saurav kalia this type of torture is against geneva convention uh geneva convention is nothing but a set a rule was set that there should not be any torture done with the prisoners of war which pakistan violated and i believe means because india is such a powerful country there will not be anything that if india wants and it, it will not happen so i feel india didn't do enough to bring justice for captain saurav kalia i had seen an interview of captain saurav kalia's brother uh, vaibhav bhaiya he said when you know his coffin came home as soon as i saw his face it had become this much and uh, i in- i immediately decided that i will not allow my parents to see him for the last time because they will not be able to bear that pain so that really hurts you know captain saurav kalia was was tortured till death but he never shared a single information despite so much of torture so for someone like that we 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 really failed him we really failed his family but if if you ever visit his parents in palampur in himachal pradesh you will receive so much love from his mother he always says ki he says mere ghar mein jo bhi aata hai saurav ke naam pe wo saurav bhi hota hai and i feel that saurav has come so i i love them all so that that really hurts a lot and from captain saurav kali i would love to shift to another uh, soldier called uh, named captain amit bhardwaj you know such lovely bonding between the soldiers captain amit bhardwaj was little senior to captain saurav kali mm-hmm. so uh, when uh, he got to know amit bhardwaj got to know that saurav is coming he was very happy because till that he was junior most now someone junior to him will be coming and he will be senior and when captain saurav kalia's uh, patrol party went missing he immediately with around 30 people went to search and there he saw that there are a lot of pakistani army so he immediately asked his rest of the men to go back and inform the base till then he will be handling those uh, enemy and uh, naturally he also got killed in kargil war and till 54 days it was not possible to retrieve his body because uh, that place still had pakistani uh, army so uh, when the, the from indian army they had called his home his sister had received the phone and uh, got the news that he is no more his and but uh, she also got to know that we have not yet been retrieved the body so uh, sister didn't share this information with his parents because parents were still having some hope so you know uh, sister thought that when the body will come then only i will tell them because there was no uh, surety when they will be able to send the body and uh, the the parents were going to all the temples and doing all the havans and uh, puja for the safety of their son and uh, his sister knowing everything were accompanying all those pujas sister is sunita didi and uh, despite knowing the truth and he 
she she without any complaint waited for 54 days when we had captured that place and there were no more pakistani enemy then only the body was retrieved and when the body was retrieved it was seen that till his last moment he was holding his gun like that so he actually till his last moment he kept fighting and that's how he lost his life and regarding this wait i remember the re- remember uh, captain hanifuddin his mother uh, mrs uh, hema aziz so hema aunty has three sons and she uh, was an air india vocal artist uh, singer so and she had lost her husband early and she had to keep his three children at home and go for different official tours and uh, hanifuddin was given the responsibility to take care of his brothers so again captain hanifuddin's body came 44 days later Ma- meanwhile the chief of army staff when visited hemanti hemanti just asked that let me means are you sure my son is no more because you know if i am doing the puja and his photo is there and suddenly he comes and say what mother i am still alive and you are doing my puja so then uh, chief confirmed that no we are sure that he is no more and it will take around 44 days because still pakistani army is there and if we send someone to retrieve the body we may lose more soldiers and then hemanti said everyone fighting out there is my son so to retrieve my son's body i cannot uh, risk other son's life so just don't worry i will wait so i think brave mothers only raise brave heroes <laughs> like that's so true now yeah like even chaturbedi shivaji story that's what absolutely absolutely and you know people means in this journey of desh we have seen such brave families that sometimes when we fall we means for me personally when my kids fall sick and i panic i try to remember these brave mothers and and try to tell myself if they can we at least can try to be little bit brave so they are very inspiring more than brave i would say it's the the stand to bear that sacrifice yes it's stand to bear that pain that's tremendous like i can never do that absolutely i can never do that means uh, i should hear uh, share a story of a father also because fathers are always like unsung heroes we ha <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> we always sideline them yes, yeah yes exactly <laughs> So there was Captain P V Vikram mm-hmm. who was from artillery unit. So those Beaufort tankers are mm. artillery unit. So Captain P V Vikram's father was also from the same unit. Uh, so when Captain P V Vikram got uh, killed, uh, someone from the unit called Uncle, and Uncle picked up the phone and they said that your son got hurt and he is in hospital. So then Uncle said. you know i am an artillery officer you can't fool me if he was hurt and he was in an hospital you wouldn't have called me so i know he is no more so you have called me now since i am an artillery officer i know the consequences so just tell me if my son is in one piece or not because when an artillery shell falls on you your body gets shattered so i just want to know if my son is in one piece or not so that's how uh, the the soldiers are you know and once a soldier always a soldier even if you're a father of uh, father but uh, i had met them recently in may and i found now uncle has become very soft emotional but auntie has become so strong she told me you know i don't means i don't cry anymore because i feel he was bent to be meant to meant for this he was given this duty he was sent to this earth with this duty he has done his part now uh, and he went back when it is over so if i cry i will be disrespecting his will he has willfully given his life for this country he wanted that and i have to respect that so i cannot cry for 24 years because i have lost my son for this this is like I don't know I feel so bad I seriously feel like crying But you know uh, 
just one thing you know that keeps disturbing me i know people soldiers are you know dying on the borders i know they are you know for that one day when we don't even know when the war is going to happen they are keep training their whole life for that one moment and it's not even been like very long since we got independence it's been like it's been like just 75 years and it's just like two generations before so we just got freedom and there are still soldiers dying for this nation what do you feel you are someone who is closely working with the families of the marchers so what do you feel when the debate comes about standing up for the national anthem you know people are debating uh, when, we don't yeah. need to stand for the national when, anthem so you know when someone senior or elderly person from your family enters a room we stand up because we stand up out of respect so here also whenever our national anthem plays we should stand up out of respect respect to those who has sacrificed their lives to maintain the democracy of our country you know our country is a democratic country and that that national anthem our national flag to to protect that protect that democracy our soldiers have uh, sacrificed their lives so they deserve respect and i believe and i feel that we should give them that due respect that national anthem is just not a mere song it is actually the sacrifice of so many soldiers they have actually you know means since the time of ramayan and mahabharat means since the time of abhimanyu our our braves are sacrificing to protect the boundaries of our country so we should stand up for our national anthem to respect that bravery to respect that sacrifice there shouldn't even be a debate about this absolutely no debate I means you you don't think twice when you give res- give res- stand uh, to give respect to your elders so here also it's like same rule applies it's really a clear cut point of view what you said thank thank you so much thanks for coming here i know it's because of the time constraint uh, our conversation is very small but it's really informative but it's really you know i think people should know this yes. i'm going to this video is going to be out on the kargil uh, memorial day so yes. definitely Yes. Thank you so much for coming Thank here. Thank you so much for calling me here. I represent all my members of Desh because we always are like our individual identity and name is uh, not important. We work as a Desh and I represent Desh here. Thank you Thank so much you for so calling much. me. Thank you so much. I I would never got to know about this if if it's not for you. Thank you. I'm really grateful. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.